Breaking news. Last week I had the Avengers one, and then I still put the. Oh yeah, well, yeah, yeah, it worked. Yeah, 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 it kind yeah, of worked. Yeah, out. yeah, yeah. Cool, cool, cool. So like, my whole legs are just covered in mosquito bites, and it's like honestly the worst thing I think I've ever had happen to me. You just use well, afterbite. Well, I, like, I'm gonna have to like cover my entire leg in afterbite. Like, yeah, that's, that's Windex. Uncomfortable. Windex that. There's a lot worse things that are gonna happen to you. Don't worry. Is that a Ooh. promise or a threat? No, it's just what life is gonna do. It's more like a prophecy. <laughs> That's why I tell people. Oh, what's going on, everybody? Welcome to the F Word Podcast. I'm your host, G, and with me are Vass and Anthony. Um, hope you're having a good week. Still from the top. Kind of just started that randomly without really thinking about where I wanted to be. So, yes, we started already. Hello. Hi. Um, yeah, F Word Podcast, uh, an affiliate of the Saskatchewan Podcast Network. Get me some housekeeping stuff out of the way. Did you get the With, email from that one guy asking about like the views for the month of July? I did. I just haven't responded okay. yet because I don't. I haven't looked. I usually don't look until I absolutely need to. Mostly out of fear. The Saskatchewan Podcast Network is uh, brought to you by Connexus Credit Union. Wish you could have Marie Kondo come clean up your finances. <laughs> if only you could apply the condo method to your bills and accounts. <laughs> At Connexus, their financial advisors will work with you to streamline and organize your money, creating your own method for cleaning up your finances. Let banking spark joy. Contact a Connexus financial advisor today by calling 1 800 667 7477. That is, of course, another ad from Connexus Credit Union, who's a sponsor of the Saskatchewan Podcast Network. And we are the F word. Gentlemen, how's the week? Not bad. Warm. Warm. Very warm. Mm-hmm. With humidity, I think it's in the 40s. Yeah. Pretty Real close. hot. Just mm-hmm. just brimming up there. I like dropped off like eight resumes yesterday. Oh, I yeah. decided to wear like pants. And it was fuck. It was awful. Like, oh my goodness. It was just like, man, I hate it so Ch- much. It's good Live in the construction world. Pants. Tell you what. You yeah. have no choice but to. Boots, pants, the whole deal. Shorts. Do you ever have to like sit out there on the road with a sign, or is that somebody else? No, that's never been my job. But that's I know cool. there's people that have to do that, and I feel bad for them. I feel terrible I for them. Th- I always give them a wave. I don't know if they get an umbrella or not. They should get like a I've really high vis umbrella, so at least they're kind of more noticeable from far away. Right. But they should definitely get them something because like, I feel bad for them. Wait, what? What do they do? They just stand well, up they, there with a stop sign. S- oh. in, in certain circumstances, like they need someone to restrict traffic in some way or another, like stop people or slow them down or whatever, mm-hmm. that kind of thing. So yeah, they usually have signed people. The highways people, those are the... Mm. And they're in the middle the of nowhere, too. Yeah, I feel bad for those mm-hmm. guys. They better get an umbrella or something. <laughs> I don't think they do, but my um, my boss at work, every time she drives back home or drives somewhere and she runs into them, like she always brings extra food and she just gives them food. That's nice. That's awesome. She's the best. That's Lorraine. Lorraine, you're awesome. Um, well. I actually had a funny story because it kind of reminded me of that. Yep. So I met, uh, not met, I just saw Henry again who was like, uh, like viewer who like called me fruitcake. Oh, like Henry Greenberg. Yeah. Cause I was like, went to like Leo's tavern with like a couple of my friends and all I hear is, Hey, fruitcake. I'm like, oh, <laughs> it's Henry. So I started talking to him and he was telling me a story and he told Nick, but uh, I don't think Nick passed it on cause I didn't hear about it. But he said, uh, Henry was driving on the highway, windows down, just like nothing on and just like in silence. And out of nowhere, he just hears like a voice he recognizes. And he's like, well, who the fuck's like talking? So he looks to the left and there's some like old 45 year old white guy just listening to the podcast, and it's a part where you're talking. And he's just like, he said, I've never seen the guy before, but it was just cool to see. Like, they're <laughs> Wait, a random dude was listening to our podcast? Yeah, Holy highway. shit. Well, whoever you are, uh, thank you yeah, for that's listening. Awesome. That's pretty dope. That's very that's random really cool. and cool. <laughs> uh, also, you've got two friends of yours in Saskatoon that you went to go visit. Uh, mm-hmm. So they are now new viewers. Yes. Uh, I would definitely like you to shout them out. 
Spencer and Danny and little Tessa. And little Tessa. Thank you for listening and continue to tell your friends. And Jordan. And yeah, Jordan. Who Jordan, is? A.K.A. Chico. A.K.A. Chico, who yeah. is a uh, prolific soccer player. Yeah. They're, and uh, how prolific is he? He's hey. very he's very good. And they're trying to get a pro team in Saskatchewan called uh, Sask Select. So mm-hmm. they've been doing a summer series this uh all summer they played against Toronto FC once. They're playing. They played the Vancouver Whitecaps on the 25th, and I actually got to go to that game, which is pretty great. It was pretty awesome. Yeah, it was a good vibe, and it's it's they're just trying to get out there and uh and get their name out there and get the the fan base built up more and more. Like it has a following. It's just got to get to that point where they have uh, the pro team, and they're playing Toronto FC again on August 11th, I believe. So anyone in Saskatoon during that time definitely get some tickets. Or in Canada, just support your local soccer teams. Exactly. What are, what are this is their designation? Like you know, in NHL they have the um, AHL or something like WHL. that. WHL. Like, WHL. Sorry, I, yes. I'm not very good with the leagues and stuff like that. All I know it's going to be the pro team in in Saskatchewan for the Canada Pro League. So like Toronto FC is in there, Vancouver Whitecaps. They're more notable. Yep. That kind of stuff. So yeah, it's just getting that soccer scene up and running and stuff like that. So yeah, that's sweet. Yeah, man. You might be really good friends with a professional soccer player. No, I mean, I, no. technically, he's a professional soccer player, is he? Pretty he close. He gets paid for playing soccer? Uh, I think. I'm not sure. Well, but either he way, is, he's a professional. Has, he's but he great. could get bigger, and then you can watch sure. TV and be like, that's my friend. Because that's what you sound like, right? Yeah, exactly. Exactly how you it's sound It's exactly like. it. You're right. Absolutely. Um, Everybody that's listening, I hope you're enjoying your week. I hope you guys are having an awesome time. It's a long weekend for us. I don't know if it's a long weekend for everyone else. My Google Calendar tells me that it's New Brunswick Day on Monday, Civic slash Provincial Day, which is a regional holiday, Heritage Day in Alberta, Saskatchewan Day in, duh, Saskatchewan, British Columbia Day in British Columbia, and Natal Day in Nova Scotia. So that's happening on Monday, thus a long Weekend. Either way, it works out to a day off. Yeah, exactly. Stat That's exactly two. what it is. Um, where are we going to start? Irishman trailer. Amazing. So good. Did you see it? No. Oh, yeah, you're not a trailer person. Are you into that Wait, genre, no, no. like the Do mob stuff? No, no, I don't care. Go ahead. Okay. I just totally forgot. Oh, That's my okay. bad. That's not cool. Martin Scorsese's next film, mm-hmm. Robert De Niro. It's on Netflix, Joe right? Pesci. Yes. Yeah, and uh, they brought him out of retirement, Joe Pesci, too. Yeah, man. He never even wanted to act in the begin with. No, but he just probably fell why, into his roles like yeah. perfectly. It's probably why he's so Still, my damn cousin good. Vinny has to be one of the, my favorites. That's your favorite, hey? One of my favorites. It's, it's really tough. It's tough for me. It's just hilarious. Yeah. It, no, it's it's good, but it's between <laughs> yeah. that and uh, and him and Goodfellas. Like, he Goodfellas. was just so Home good. Alone Tommy and. Yeah, yeah but uh, that was more of a comedic role. Yeah, exactly. If you're, ta- yeah, if you're on a serious. I would say probably my cousin Vinny is the better one because it's him. Like he is For sure. the lead, yeah, along yeah. with Marissa Tomei, who mm. is stunning. Yeah, uh, yeah. So the Irishman trailer, they do use the de aging on Robert De Niro. Looks really good. Yeah, which I is apparently it was... why it took so long. I think to For get sure. it going as it is. So, the best I've ever seen it was project, it? very was much it? so. Wouldn't it be like a really expensive like to have someone like be de aged in a whole movie. But Netflix is all behind them. A, a director like Martin Scorsese and an all star cla- cast like Al Pacino, Robert De Niro, and Joe Pesci. I'm not sure who else from though that that age is in it, but those... and it's a story about Jimmy Hoffa, which is like it has the Jimmy Hoffa story, which is like amazing. One of the biggest mysteries yeah. ever. Like still, thing. no one knows where Jimmy Hoffa's body is. Is that the thing? I, I haven't paid attention. I think that's it. Yeah. Yeah. It's a. It's. But it was. It's a big thing. Yeah. Like. Yeah. But it. Uh, it has lots of uh, following, and it was a lot bit longer than I thought. The trailer. Yeah. It was, yeah. Well, it, we it got showed... the teaser. How far back? Yes. There's a very very small teaser. I think it was only a voice and a few clips. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't think you saw much face or anything nope. like that. But I didn't see any face in this one. It was like full on trailer. Full on, you got to see everybody in their element kind of thing. You get a feel for it. I wonder if they're going to cheat by using more of a darker, like darker lighting. Mm -hmm. Because that's when they showed the reveal of Robert De Niro as de-aged Robert De Niro. Yeah. There was more shadowing, which shadowing does help. For sure. Like, I will, the best I've ever seen it so far still to this day is Samuel Jackson and Captain Marvel. That was like... The future is now, yeah. right? Like it was crazy. So I, I, I don't see why they wouldn't use that level. Also, it's a trailer. So my yeah. guess is they're going to refine stuff for the movie. Yeah, it'll be a little bit better for the movie. And I mean, but it still looks really good. Yeah, we that's, still don't know when it's coming out. Yes, apparently that's true. it's going to be shown at the Toronto Film Festival. Yeah, correct. Yeah. And maybe then we'll get in a release date, but it'll have a limited theatrical, and then it's Netflix's baby. So they'll do what they will with it. So and just 
I, I think it. Everywhere. I think it should release on in theaters. I think it'll do amazing. They, well, well, I think they will the for only Oscar. Way to, yeah, get Oscar. Yeah. So yeah. you need at least fourteen, seven to fourteen day run in an L.A. Yeah. County theater. Yeah. It has to run for three show times for the. For, for the period. entire run, it has to be a six o'clock showing, and I think there has to be like a nine o'clock showing or something like that for Oscar consideration. So that's which is interesting because the actual nominations for the Oscars get sent to the people's houses that are yeah. in the Academy, which is really funny. And like most of the stories are, nobody ever watches them; like mm-hmm. they just vote on whoever they feel like voting for. Yeah, yeah. Which is kind of goes to show how not really accurate the oscar <laughs> votes are but yeah well my friend on instagram like who lives in new york he always gets like all these nomination like dvds and shit that's dope and like he's like my age so he's just kind of like he just i don't know how he like he's the guy who always gets like, free tickets and shit like that and early nice. access like wow. good for him but actually i think my editor for like entertain facts who did the logo he got the last jedi on dvd like for like nomination shit like, yeah the special ago. effects like, yeah no, they're talking about it because he like, had the full DVD. They just sent it to him. Like, that's pretty cool. Oh, yeah, man. They send him the whole thing because they want you to watch it. They want you to, to like what Give it's considered feedback, for yeah. and, and just prepare yourself for the Oscars. It's like mm-hmm. doing your homework before you vote, right? Like you yeah. want to do that. But uh, no, Irishman looks really good. Yeah, I I'm would not hyped. be surprised if they sent it to uh, for Oscar oh. consideration. Oh, would you like, so say is a Netflix original. Would, yeah. If it came to uh, like our city in theaters, would you go to theaters or would you just wait? No, I would go to no, theaters. I'd go to theaters and watch it for sure. Yeah, th- those are that might be that fall yeah. under the category of like because it's who's there. Like if yeah. it was any other movie, then no, probably not. Think about it when we we were pretty young when their their high hitting movies were out. Mm-hmm. They were already on DVD and stuff like that. So you only got to see them at home to see yeah. something in the big screen. It's a little different feel. So yeah, definitely like, would be up for it. Imagine being able to go see IMAX, Goodfellas maybe? in. Uh, no, I wouldn't see it in IMAX. No, no, that would much. be more. Uh, I guess yeah, I might not be good in IMAX, but whatever. The only and I guess the only thing that I'd be worried about on theater though is the conversion of the technology. Mm. So mm. maybe on TV it will look better. Than it would on a big screen. 4K, and it'll probably be ultra 4K, 4K yeah. TVs. So it has the capability to be done that way and that well. Yeah, so yeah. in your home, you might get the better quality for sure. Yeah. But it's a different experience in the theater. I think. It's all digital at this point. So really, it's not. It's more of just yeah. literally stretching out that scene. Physically stretching yeah. it out may or may not have an effect. Just like some movies when you go see them in the theaters, they look really good. But then you get them at home. Like Civil War is one that I remember the airport scene. Yeah. Before Spider-Man comes on, Tony's head on the Iron Man suit. It looked better in the theater than it did at home. Like you can obviously oh, yeah. tell there was mm-hmm. more CG. Like it was just one of those. You could just tell. You yep. could see it, right? Uh, but in theaters, I didn't notice it at all. I'm like, what the fuck happened to this scene? We're just not- so excited. For sure. That's probably another thing. <laughs> That's what yeah. they're hoping on. Ah, they won't notice. <laughs> uh, End Games out on digital. You have it? Yes, I got the digital release. And then the um, the DVD, Blu-ray. Well, did you Blu- buy Ray. it or did you just get it? He acquired it. I acquired it. it. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Very nice. So, are you putting him on blast? <laughs> I was like, well, Be cool. You, I, at first I thought he bought it. I'm like, well, why the fuck would you buy it? Then I realized, like, oh, okay, wait a second. Because I want to view. I haven't We're going to go stuck. Yeah, Lenny and Carl. <laughs> I haven't seen it since we saw it all together. Yeah, I honestly I haven't had a chance to see it yet. I saw it one. I don't more know time why. After. Like otherwise, I'd be like on there. My my boss has probably seen it three four times now already. He asked me like how many times you see. It? I'm like actually none yet. <laughs> mm. So I don't know what it is. I there's a, there's clips on YouTube and they've I always want to go see them. They've gone crazy with those clips. By the way, no, no, no I'm not. I'm, that's not what I'm worried about. Oh. I don't know what it is, but like I just. I stopped watching the clips and I've got this weird feeling. I'm like, no, I'm not going to watch it now. I'm not going to watch it now. And I don't know if I'm like gotten to a point where I just want to see the whole thing again, like yeah. five or six more times. Yeah. But then I remember when they were leaking the Thor coming into Wakanda scene. I watched the shit at like every chance I got on repeat. See, I never saw a leaked copy of that. Ever. Oh, I didn't. Quite not a bit. once. Did on I, YouTube. I don't think I even thought it was a thing. I honestly had no idea that that was happening. Well, I, was I didn't just... see before the movie. I'm talking about after the movie. Oh, came after. Like oh. people were taking video. Oh, yeah, yeah. So like between the well, time that it was in theaters and it was coming out on Blu-ray yeah. or whatever, like you that's just want to see that scene and people yeah. had done well, that's that. just like. But in Endgame, there's like yeah. eight scenes and I'm like, I want to see it all together. Portals scene and definitely Cap getting, mm-hmm. yeah. lifting the hammer. That was those yeah. are two top ones that everyone wanted to see. I also see. love that. Thor light me up scene that was dope as shit because that was a yeah. callback from the first one where he yeah, yeah. literally lit him up and it gave yeah. him three hundred percent power. That was so cool. Every time yeah. I think of that, I'm like, oh, huh. that's the first one. What do you know? <laughs> yeah. Um, cool, cool. Oh, also, I did a uh, deep dive. 
Deep oh. Dive number 11 I did this past Monday, but it won't be released until the, I believe, the 15th, the 16th, because the 16th is a Saturday. Um, it was with a friend of mine, Brandon Flagel, but his radio name is Brandon Hall. Um, it was a way to reveal his real name. Well, he's here. To, he says it on the thing. <laughs> okay. um, he works at a radio station, a country radio station. So I had some words to say about that. No, not really. But um, he's <laughs> super like it. <laughs> he's super smart in movies. And the guy literally did this like Rain Man esque type of thing at the end, where I think we went through five or six movies, and he knew the exact dates of it. Like it was wild. It was really good. Date of release? Yeah, date of release. Like literally, like boom. Oh, this was this. This was this. And I and I made a mistake on one. He's like, no, it was this year. I was like. Holy shit, man. Like, I didn't know he had that power. Yeah. It was amazing. Um, but he was, yeah, super eccentric dude. And by eccentric, I mean just super, ex- like, awesome to listen to. Yeah. He's just an awesome dude to listen to. He's got, uh, so that episode's coming out uh, on the 16th. We talked about Hollywood trends. That's the deep dive. Nice. Now, how well we did, I don't know, but he just listened to it and gave me the thumbs up. He's like, I listened to it and I was entertained. I'm Is that kind of Hollywood trends kind of going off the back of Once Upon a Time in Hollywood? We use we definitely use that as the crux of it for yeah. sure. Um, we went from trends that we're seeing on what type of movies are coming out to things that came out in the past, what trends we like the most, what decades we like the most, yeah. maybe some variances between the decades. Not maybe. Yeah. We talked about variances between the decades. Uh, and then kind of how Hollywood itself has been shifting from those times too. Yeah. Um, I think the most poignant thing that we both kind of realized was that uh, and this is going to lead into our uh, segue into our Once Upon a Time in Hollywood uh, review. Or mine? Did you see it? No, I haven't seen it. It's okay. all on you. Sorry. Um, we realized that Tarantino ushered in the independent movement of the 90s. Oh, yeah. And he his films are very much 70s style. Even though they're different years, Yeah, the 70s are very prevalent in his mo- films. Mm. And he does a film about the end of the era of the 70s. That's pretty funny. From a director that... How pretty much ushered in the independent era of the '90s and gay and like left whatever was there behind. So I thought that was a really cool little full circle of life type of thing. Cool, cool. Um, yeah, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. I liked it a lot. It was really good. Mm-hmm. If you're a fan of Tarantino movies, you're going to be a little bit conflicted, as I was when you first walk out of the movie, because it is the most and least Tarantino movie you will see. Hmm. Uh, it is not what you think it's going to be, based on what you've seen on in some of the trailers. Uh, it is. Really well written. Leonardo DiCaprio is unbelievable. I think this is my favorite role. Between this and Wolf of Wall Street are my That's two favorite I was just going to ask you, I'm like, who stood out for you the most? Well, Leonardo DiCaprio because he is the lead okay. in terms of screen time. Yep. Brad Pitt was awesome. I actually liked him here than I did Aldo Rain in Inglorious Bastards. Really? But Margot Robbie is the heart and fucking soul of that movie. Awesome. Film. She is unbelievable and i was super happy to hear that sharon tate's sister i believe it was no sister or daughter i believe it was a sister yeah also felt the same on how great gave her like a thumbs up kind of thing gave, gave tarantino a thumbs up on, on how that was yeah um but i was looking at it and i'm like she is she doesn't have a lot of lines i know that was a point of controversy is that what you're gonna ask i was gonna ask you like your opinion on that because that's what i heard too oh you I, said that the fact uh i support quentin tarantino rejecting the the that idiotic question mm-hmm. uh, sp- because I watched it and yeah. I'm just like she didn't need words she was unbelievable you always knew that she was a- there and around and she represented something in the film that I don't th- there was this there was this beautiful essence of what people wanted that era to be mm-hmm. she encompassed in her character I think yeah that's the best the way I can put it together um, there is one specific scene which is very heavy on her um, I won't say what it is, but it is outstanding. Her performance in it is outstanding. She doesn't say a single line, mm-hmm. and it is wonderful. Is and that the so, movie theater scene. Oh yeah, sorry, that is the movie theater. It's in the trailer. Scene. Okay, yes, you're you're right. It's yeah. a longer scene for sure. Yeah, but from start to finish, up, yeah. that whole thing was just beautiful. Yeah. Um, and then because and then everything else around it almost circulates around that that scene itself. I don't know. It's very good. Cool. Um, everybody that was in it that was really good. Um, there is some controversy around Bruce Lee's daughter. Yeah. I yeah. don't know how I feel about it because I'm not Bruce Lee's daughter. All I can say is that I don't believe that it was given the way that that incident start that scene started and ended. I don't think any one person is at fault, and I don't believe 
what was the country what was like her comments about I just, like, how that he she made that that he was portrayed as as a more of a jokey character and people yeah. were laughing at him because him and Brad Pitt because Brad Pitt's a stunt guy in it yeah. um they had a scene together yeah, and yeah. and stuntman and prolific martial artist you can imagine what might have happened may or may not have happened anyways i didn't see that um i did laugh during that scene though mm-hmm. because it was a funny scene and it was funny how it how it went down yeah um but I, I don't know. I, it's really hard as a for me. I don't think it was an issue. But also, again, I'm not his daughter. Yeah. I think the only thing I could say to that is he's been immortalized, and people have put him on a on a god pedestal for all of these years. Yeah. And the only thing I can say is that maybe at that time when he first showed up and he came in with his ideology, mm-hmm. people were not receptive to it. So I think it more represented. The reaction, the, the reactions that people had, and how they didn't understand his philosophies, yeah, and him as a person, and he's very new to it. I don't know the history very well, yeah, but my guess is that was why that scene went out the way it did. Mm-hmm. However, I cannot, I cannot say that she is obviously wrong because, again, I'm not his daughter. So, yeah. you, if you see the movie, if you feel one way or the other, fine. All I can say is watch the movie. It's very good. Does not finish like you think it's going to finish. It's really funny at times. It does drag quite a bit, and Tarantino does Tarantino himself a little bit in the corner while everyone's watching, and it's a little bit awkward. Does he make his cameo as per usual? No, he. Do- I don't think he does. Oh, I didn't really? Pay attention that much, but I don't think he does. Hmm. But, I think he's well known for that. Uh, no. Well, kind for of, most of them, I don't think he did it in Glorious. I don't think he had a spot for himself. No, in no, he didn't. He didn't Django though at the yeah. end, right? Um, so I don't know. And then, then Hateful Eight, he did the voiceover. Right. So anyways, I would highly, highly recommend it. Uh, in the pantheon of Tarantino movies, I would put it somewhere in the middle. I haven't decided. Hmm. Um, I think I put it in between that kind of, I think I liked it. I think I liked it better than Django. Oh, okay. I think, but I'm not sure because Django's kind of in my middle ground. Okay. Um, but anyways, um, yeah, so that's that's my thing. I have don't have a score for it, but it is cool, good cool. and it's a it's a very good movie. Um where do we want to start? Oh, the voice of Minnie Mouse and Martin from The Simpson, Rusty Taylor had passed away. Are these hmm. the same people or so, uh, yeah, yeah, she voiced both Minnie Mouse yeah. and Martin. Um so Rusty Taylor which who, I didn't know her name. It's Martin. I'm Googling uh, it. He was uh he was, was the he... guy that was always going after Lisa. Yeah. The doctor said I wouldn't have so many nosebleeds if I just kept my finger out of there. That's Chief Ralph. Wiggum's kid. That's Ralph. Oh, wait, that's Ralph. What am I talking about? I'm sorry. Martin's another kid. Martin's so Prince. This kid. That's the one. Oh. The preppy kid. Wasn't he like Wasn't he German? Preppy? No, you're thinking the, about the other one. I don't know. I, I don't really watch the interesting. Simpsons. I just like, I've seen Yeah, him. I was way off. Um, interesting. I haven't seen the Simpsons in years. She also voiced Minnie in Who Framed Roger Rabbit, Runaway Brain, Mickey, mm. Donald, Goofy, and the Three Musketeers and Get a Horse. Quite an icon- iconic voice. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Very iconic voice. So that was kind nice. of huge because, mm-hmm. you know. Just so how deal. old was she? Uh, let me see. 75. Was it, it 75? Yeah. Yes. 75. Okay. Where do we want to go? Guardians 3 takes place after Thor 4. Does that matter? No, not really. Just kind of, I think it was just more to explain that Thor is not going to be in Guardians 3. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And just where it falls on the timeline. Mm -hmm. And pretty much they're most likely going to introduce Adam Warlock as a post credit scene in Thor 4 and introduce him in Guardians 3. I find that stupid, though, because they kind of like set it up an endgame where Thor is going to be like a part of the Guardians. And it felt like just like for a while. As Guardians of the Galaxy. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Well, I guess guess, like, I feel like people said that the Russo brothers kind of like set it up that way. And James Gunn was kind of like, no, like, I don't want to do that. So they kind of like. Well, okay, they set it up like he was with them for that part and he might just go off on his own journey because, again, he's just trying to find himself, who he is, not as the king or whatever as Thor, who is Thor kind of thing. So and he needs a ride into space. Yeah, exactly. So but just like the captain, like the captain comments is kind of like what led me to think like, oh, okay. He's yeah. gonna be like a I think I think he just loves messing with him <laughs> more than anything. And they, it was a callback from Infinity War. I think yeah. it was more so another callback mm. to a previous yeah, Marvel yeah. film to be like, oh, this was funny because we liked it in Infinity War. And it was funny. That was good. But it's kind of funny how like I thought it lasted Thor's... two jokes too long. Yeah. That was majority yeah. of my comments for Guardians of the Galaxy 2. Yeah. <laughs> Lasted a little too long. But yeah, it's funny how Thor was the big one now and then mm. <laughs> Quill's kind of normal. <laughs> yeah, that's true. He's With not the, the god. Yeah, uh, yeah. What was it? The, the uh, god pirate or yes, the god pirate, pirate angel. Pirate, pirate angel. angel. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, so I don't know. Thor yeah. 4 is going to be fun and Guardians 3 should be good too. And so 
Mm-hmm. That's all. That's time. all fun. Mm-hmm. Um, have you guys seen Baby Driver? Yep. No. Oh, you man. should watch it. It's good. I well, I want to. I keep like wanting to watch it with like headphones or some shit. Mm. Like just because I heard like it's better because like apparently like audio is like jump back and forth. Well, yeah, because no, like apparently when he has like the headphone in like on one ear, like yeah. all the music will only play out of that side if you're wearing a headphone or That's some shit cool. like that. I didn't know that. Yeah. Oh, interesting. Mm-hmm. I would say you can even watch it normally because yeah. it was like. It's just a very good movie. I think for an indie that just comes out of left field, like you have no idea what to expect. They just, I don't know. Did you want a sequel? Because I know that was like a big, like kind of like controversial point where people are like, you don't need a sequel, but they set it up for one. You don't need one. You there, but with, that was yeah. my second one because Ansel El- Elgort has seen a completed first draft. Yeah, but it's not that's, official. That's He's the just thing. Seen like the first draft. He's seen this first draft. It doesn't mean anyone else is going to see it. At the end of the day, it's only going to bank off him and his character, obviously, because it's all called Baby Driver. Well, and he's the only one left. Edgar Wright's vision for it. Yeah, he's the only one left from that crew. So not to like steer off this topic, but just like a check. Do you have anything about Ben Affleck's Batman script on that? No, I don't. So like, if you want to add that on, that's like I think a really interesting. Do you want to go point. for it? Well, if we're done with it, I don't want to cut it off. I was going to say I'm excited for it. I'm looking. I, I would like it, but I, sorry, I wouldn't like it. But if it comes out, I'm going to go see it because I would. Because Baby Driver is just really It'd good. Be interesting to see where they go with it. It's it's really good, not just because it's a good movie, but, but how technically, how technically proficient the artistry is in that movie. Because mm-hmm. they blend the beats of all the songs with what's going on on screen really well. Like I heard the gunshots, mm-hmm. like too, like that was like yeah, man. Out. From like the way that like he, an entire tracking shot that is. That has a has a, a underlay of a, a really good song, and all the beats and the movements are all perfectly in harmony with what's going on. And I can only imagine how amazing, the how sorry, not amazing, how hard that mm-hmm. would be to get such an amazing tracking shot. Yeah. And so, yeah, it's it's really really good. But anyways, cool. the Batman script, go for it. So this was like all reported. So I don't know if it's true, but I think it's kind of true because like it's, like it seems reliable enough. But they're talking about Ben Affleck's. Uh, like canceled Batman script like yeah. back when he was directing it mm-hmm. and it was talking you guys have all played the Arkham games correct? Correct. Nope. No really? I have not gotten into them. Oh my god you're missing out. I would highly recommend I haven't played Arkham Knight but like the first three were like great but yeah. anyway so apparently the movie was being based on Arkham like Asylum like mm-hmm. it was going to be an Arkham Asylum like movie hmm. where he has all his villains and it delves on like the insanity of Batman and like all his like own issues and all this shit where he just goes around in the asylum like just beating the shit out of everybody and all this crap That'd be sweet. Mm-hmm. And that's like, that was the script he had. That's and apparently somebody said that it was going to be like the best Batman movie ever. Like he read the <laughs> script. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And obviously just kind of like he kept like changing it and changing it and changing it. And just it. made it worse. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So His originally like, he just kept it. So Matt Reeves made it worse? No, Ben Affleck. Like ben Affleck. Affleck. Oh. He just kept it changing it. And then he just couldn't like make a like a satisfying one, I guess. And Hopefully then... he saved that first draft. But either way, it doesn't matter now. Mm-hmm. But uh, that would have been an interesting thing. And I, and I mean, it could have fell off the back of what happened on Batman versus Superman where Superman died so he's like in his own head about that and feeling guilty and blah 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 do you think he would be that far in or would it be an earlier version well I know I don't know I think this one would be after but I heard there was going to be also like another version was the Under the Red Hood story oh yeah which would have been before BVS which also would have been like fucking under the Red Hood. Which like Jason Todd mm-hmm. when Joker kills the Robin and he comes back. Uh, that, uh, well, which yeah, would that then makes bleed sense. Into the ha ha ha. Yeah, 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 who's yeah, laughing yeah. now? Uh, yeah, I yeah. guess I guess the timeline wasn't really revealed, so you kind of just speculate at this point. So that's why I'm I'm thinking it's okay. It falls right after what happened in so the BVS. Red, yeah, so the, the the BVS thing happens after in this in that universe. Let's yeah. say it happened after the events of Red Hood. Right. Mm-hmm. Which would then happen before that would be also be after any Arkham Asylum type of stuff. It, it, yeah. If, if, depending on what it decides to follow but my guess is is it would be let's say if they were going to do the movies Asylum Red Hood then BVS in uh, yeah. that order mm-hmm. um, well, I think he was Batman for like 20 years in BVS so like there was yeah. like, a lot of history <laughs> well and when I look at the brutality that was in BVS where he was branding people and those people were getting like fucked up in prison like my guess is I would imagine not my guess sorry I would imagine that an Arkham story before that diving into his psyche mm-hmm. Um, would kind of be an interesting thing to show how how he got there, how easy it is for him to be thrown into the extreme deprivation or the complete malevolence of his own mind, and so where what he's fully capable of doing yeah. as an evil version of himself. So he's constantly riding that line between those two 
split versions of mm-hmm. himself, right? Because essentially, like the Joker is him, just yeah. uh, in a in in a physical form yeah. outside wreaking havoc. That would be that'd be pretty crazy. I mean, that's like Shutter Island type of shit. Well, I gotta right wonder there. if there's still a chance for that release to happen and just won't be. Oh no! I guess it's, it's, I guess it's a whole other universe. Well, no, because, because Ben it, Affleck doing the Batman would have been part of the DCU, right? Mm-hmm. If he, so, if it was well, Batman. So now the Robert Pattinson one is going to be completely separate. I don't know if it is. Be, I don't think if they ever like said it was going to be separate. Yeah, I don't think so they're just going to brush off. Well, like, I know like this is supposed to be good. like a past Batman. Like this is like one yeah. set in the past. So like kind of makes sense. They could lead up to that because if he's fighting oh, yeah. all those villains, those villains have to go somewhere. Once those villains well, are like in one area. Six of like Batman yeah. shit. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. It would be, I think it'd be really cool because then you can totally go from the Batman to the asylum, let's say. Yeah. And then once he has them all in prison, it was the biggest mistake he could ever make. Batman must thrust himself <laughs> into the depths. Sounds really sexual. Right. Yeah. Thrust you to and go there. depth. But like, the reason I was excited was because like Moist. so many Batman movies. <laughs> Moist. There's like so many Batman movies, right? And like yeah. an yeah. Arkham Asylum would be like one that's like totally different than any From other one field, was yeah. made. And I think I, I think that's that's one that we'd be clamming for. So we were talking about trends when I was talking to uh, to Brandon, and The Boys is out. I haven't seen. I want to see that. I put I, I've list. heard nothing but good. Things, yeah, and, honestly, and just like The Watchmen came out, and Brandon mentioned this when The Watchmen came out. Watchmen too. I'm not shitting on it. I'm like, why? This looks so Listen, good. It's because of what happened with the movie. Honestly, to me, the movie is a piece of crap. I never actually finished. You didn't it. like it at all? I didn't know. Oh, it was long, winded, read the, and I, boring. We still have the graphic novel. I read it. I thought the movie was. It was definitely long, but it was extremely true. I think it just lo- it, it lost my interest fairly easy that way. I don't know what it, I mean, it was me, but I just couldn't. You know. I'm not going to say the whole thing because obviously I want you to listen to the Hollywood Trends episode. But yep. one of the points was Watchmen came out in the comics era to go against the rise in comics. Watchmen, the movie came out at a time when comics were also rising. And the boys is kind of like the Watchmen yeah. of that. We dive deeper into it, but in in the way that the trends roll, sometimes you do need that thing that's going to undercut the entire zeitgeist, the cultural zeitgeist, to really throw everything off and then allow a new thing to come in and just mess around with that territory. Well, I heard from like a Snyder fanboy, so I always take it with a grain of salt, that like uh, they were talking about like how Snyder had like a big influence on like or not like a big but like has like started to have an influence on like the superhero genre now with like Brightburn that just came out like a darker like grittier like version mm-hmm. and that the was boys, James Gunn right yeah yeah and the boys is like apparently also kind of like a DCEU style like yeah. dark version so he's which taking uh, he's taking some credit for all that well he not him just like fanboys are like oh, standing okay. for him well because he did that with Watchmen yeah. at, 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 the, at the right time right because yeah. mm-hmm. it came out in 2007 I think let's say around like 2008 like around sorry yeah, no, it was 2008 it was definitely yeah. on the darker side for them and stuff like that so then so, so that's that's really interesting Big with Brightburn and the boys then yeah. why not really take the, the the reality of what some of this stuff would be like we're we're glorifying it like it's we do it all the time we fucking yeah. love just that a nice shit, right? change like the reason i like bvs so much was just because it was like a different like genre it's just like it wasn't a great movie like i'm, I'm not gonna like defend it say like, it was an amazing piece of movie like, it was just, but what I it represented it, and what it showed like, I found it entertaining thing, yeah. as fuck like okay this is like different this isn't just like a basic ass yeah. whatever like it was dark like i just loved it i don't know i found it really yeah. entertaining i found a dark aesthetic like lighting wise yeah, but like, i didn't find yeah. it dark in terms of like its actual tone well, for I the batman scenes been. and shit that's what i found those ones dark. those yeah. ones are great if you took if you took out all just those scenes just in that movie it would have been mm-hmm. been pretty good yeah but watching Batman throw down again that warehouse scene in Arkham Asylum, I think would be fucking wild. Mm-hmm. A picture, or something like how Daredevil <laughs> did it down the stairs. Oh that man, that stairwell like in season two. That, that whole scene, it's like that, but Batman working up. Or that hallway know. scene in season two was awesome. <laughs> yep. Uh, Indiana Jones five to start filming in twenty twenty. Does anyone care? I don't know. Does he I, hate doing his movies? Apparently, he's the one that wanted to do the last one which was terrible so he hates yeah. like han solo but he loves doing the in- why What's I, the I have no idea. Like, isn't it kind of the same shit money, mm, money. yes and no money. could be money I've seen, I don't, I know if, if there's a decent enough story there and we get back to like how Raiders of the lost ark and he, see that's the thing every second one mm. isn't very good well you I, had temple of doom which yeah. was like meh yeah and then you so you hit it back with last crusade even uh, even and Steven Spielberg said that number two fell flat, and that's why they brought sure back the Nazis because they're like the Nazis are like they they are literally yeah. the easiest villains to do mm-hmm. because For everyone sure. hates them. Yeah, and so it's super easy to have them to be the villains. Yeah, I don't know. It was pretty good. But so you're thinking this one should this one might if there's a pattern, which so far mm-hmm. I guess you can say there is because we have two really good ones, mm-hmm. two kind of shitty ones. Mm-hmm. 
and we could get this one that might actually bring it back. You've seen them? I, okay, I know I've seen... Like, I, I I know I've seen the one of Shia LaBeouf. Yeah. Well, it was this one when I was a kid. I know I've seen a couple of the other ones. I don't know if I've seen them full. Mm-hmm. But, like, I, I They're all on Netflix right now, so do yourself okay. a favor. Watch. Yeah. They still hold up. So, really watch well. one, and two, one and three for sure. So, if yeah. you want to, watch the second one. Would the fifth one be, like, under Disney as well? Or is that... I would think so. Yeah. It was Lucas Films, right? Like they sold like Indiana Jones too. I think or it's Star Wars. That's now. a good question. I'm not sure. <laughs> It'd be interesting. Because I know there's always. But those... this one might be to. We uh, always have the real facts here. This might be tr- his way of trying to f- officially pass the torch in the right way, or rather. just end it all together. I feel like it's like a, it should be torch. like a Dark Knight Rises kind of yeah. ending, where it's kind of like. Or a Logan style. What's that? A well, Logan style. Yeah, Indi- just, <laughs> Everything's gonna be dies. Logan style. Just some old fucker. Yeah. Yeah, I don't That'd know. Be interesting. That's gonna be whatever. Um, Warner Brothers. We talked about Warner Brothers. Mm-hmm. They want Keanu Reeves to play Deathstroke. Now this is just the studio. They want Keanu Reeves yeah, to play Deathstroke in the DCU. That's like kind of been the number one. Why? I don't, what about I don't Joe know. Oh wait, Hello. Deathstroke. I, I, yeah, I heard like Death oh DC DC. Oh. They already Moon had Knights Joe Manganiello. Are they, yeah, ca- are they because, cutting him too? Because and they had Manu this, Bennett. They're trying to wipe the slate yeah. out of everything except for Wonder Woman, let's say, and Aquaman, yeah. and start and in the new. Flash. I don't know about the Flash. Apparently, he's still coming. Ezra yeah. Miller. Yeah, I think he's he's he really wants that movie, regardless. He might need work. Who knows? Yeah, I don't know if Keanu Reeves would be a good Deathstroke to be honest, because I thought Joe Manganiello. No, looked like he, pretty yeah, good. he looked like fucking menacing. Yeah, yeah. he looked very good. I, I don't think Keanu Reeves would be. Apparently, he's going to come back to play a villain in the MCU. Who? A villain. I fuck, I, there's a meme. Keanu about or no, Joe? Joe, because there's like a meme about like, I want to fight you. No, it's something else. Hmm. He I'm was so mad because because I think it'd be great if he came back as like Flash, but symbiote Flash. Hmm. Because there's a symbiote vo- version of Flash Thompson. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Agent Agent Venom. Venom. Yeah, oh. that would be kind of interesting and bring yeah. him back. Oh no, Craven the Hunter. That's what it was. I could see that because I was like, I don't want to fight you, Craven. Like, yeah, I don't want to fight me neither. <laughs> You'd have to come up with the Russian accent and have to be really good. But yeah, I think he could do it. You know. I don't know who else would be. Actually, you know who would be. I think Keith. Uh, uh, what's his face? No. You say Keith Ledger? I'm like, no, oh, no, no, no. Boat sailed. Awkward. Uh, Carl um, Urban. Carl Urban. I think would be a good Craven. Carl Urban can always do anything, <laughs> dude. I was thinking about it today. He is Hollywood's best wingman right now. Versatile. You, you put him in every. He's been in so many movies, but that dude's been consistently working. Yep. And almost everything oh. he's in, he's always good he's from the, the boys smallest. Well. Yeah. I think he. This is his one, one of his few leads that I he's ever gotten. So. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. was he the guy in Thor Ragnarok? Like the, yeah, yeah. He was Scourge. Yeah, he was in he's like Aomer in uh, yeah. Lord of the Rings trilogy. Yeah, man. Lord of the Rings. That dude's. What? Oh, you should. I just never have gone around to it. Have you gotten it? Don't, like, have you gotten it spoiled? Because Ethan hasn't seen it either. Actually, but he honestly, hasn't been spoiled anything. About maybe it. I I couldn't fucking remember. Like I honestly wouldn't care enough for it actually affect me. You should. You should definitely. I think again. I think you should watch it. I think you'd like it. I think if you if you like the Game of Thrones, then you should love Lord of the Rings. Well, I didn't actually like love like I, for Game of Thrones. The reason I no, 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 I, I did you like the liked genre Game of Thrones? Like, did you like the genre, the fantasy? The, like, I'd be that interested. Era. In, I'd check it out like the first movie, but it's not like I'm like even just listen to the soundtrack. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I guess so. <laughs> Goddamn soundtrack's amazing. Yeah. I think I saw the Hobbit one. Ugh. You got to start with you got to start with uh, fellowship. And yeah, then fellowship going right through, and then you can jump towers, back to the rest yeah. of the Hobbits. Wouldn't it make more sense to watch the Hobbit? Nope. Chronological release. Not. Well, and that's that's the Star Wars dilemma. Yeah. Do you watch the prequels before you watch one, two, and or four, five, and six? I've I've done it. I've watched them all in one like one sitting yeah. from four, five, six, one, two, three. I've also done one, two, three, four, five, six. And or rest, you where would watch, you add the new Disney ones? And then now you throw in Rogue and Solo. Well, then what you do also is do you do you substitute Attack of the Clones for the Attack of the Clones TV show? And really extend that Anakin story. Technically, to you, lead you, you watch into you watch the Attack of the Clones TV show after. Oh, so it, it ha- continues. Yeah, I think it leads into oh, right it, to the Sith. it continues. Okay. So basically, you have that that in between ground from uh, Attack of the Clones and Revenge of the Sith. And that's, that's what that that's covers. It. That's okay. what that covers. Yeah. One guy I remember said that the best order that he's done it in is Episode Four, so New Hope. Yeah. Or for the fan, like the hardcore, it's just Star Wars. Yeah. Uh, episode Five. And then once the reveal happens, no, I am your father, then you go and watch one, two, and three. So almost like, what? Flashback. And then takes you all the way to the front, and then you watch one, two, and three, and then you come back for six. Interesting. Which was, I was like, oh, that's kind of a cool creative thing, because then I think what happens is it retroactive 
well, the way I th- I've been thinking about it over the years is it retroactively makes the prequels just a little bit better because of how amazing that reveal is. Mm-hmm. And so you're like, oh, yeah, this is going to be so awesome. And you're already going into it super excited. Yeah. But, I mean, so did everybody else when they saw Phantom Menace the first time. And then that got crushed. So. Yep. I, don't um, I wasn't. I was too young. I just didn't really. I like, remember when it came out. Acknowledge. Awesome. Like, yeah, man. We were hardcore into it. Yeah. We used to actually like Jar Jar Binks, too, like a bunch of idiots with our neighbor. Yeah. We I were, think so. We were not very smart kids. That's like one of the, I remember I saw an interview mm-hmm. with George Lucas and he said like the reason why that character got so much hate was why he hated like filmmaking. He was like, you know, I can't even make a movie anymore because like the fans just bitch about everything. No, like, you can. Just don't make stupid characters. But yeah. the funny but thing that, was he was supposed to be the Sith Lord. That was a real thing. That's not yeah, a joke. That's messed up. I, I don't I just wonder, to that. How would that I also don't, but he also said that Han didn't shoot. He's so um, I'm not a big Star Wars. I don't honestly don't really care. I'm like, much. come on. I just think it's a really I, though. I only did, care. Did he though? <laughs> I only care for this reason because I'm not the, a big huge Star Wars fan either. Um, I care because it fundamentally changes the character and the way his whole his whole story arc progresses in those films. Because if if he doesn't shoot first, then he's a meeker character than he's already portrayed. If he shoots first, then your first thing is like, oh shit, this guy's like ruthless. He's a bit of a dick. He's a little bit of a vagabond, all that stuff. And his redemption arc ends up being better for it. Mm-hmm. Whereas if he doesn't shoot first, then it compromises his arc. Okay. That's that's why it matters to me mm-hmm. as just like, why would you why would you betray that character like that? It's just so much better when you're working in the extremes. But yeah. again, like uh, what was the other thing Keanu Reeves was supposed to be in? What were you gonna say in the Marvel I think Universe? Moon Knight. Yeah, I That's I, I would like that a lot. I would really like that a lot. Um, I guess Moon Knight would tie into the live action Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle show that might be happening. I know that came out a while ago, but then I saw it again. And I was like, yeah. I don't remember if we talked about it. I don't think we did talk about it. I think we mentioned it that I it think might we be talked happening about it in the group chat. I don't think Maybe. we actually like talked about it on the podcast. I remember. Yeah. I remember you. Uh, did you send the link? Did you send the link? Yeah, I think he sends all the links. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> so they sent the link that uh, Kevin Eastwood. I believe that's his name. Yeah, that's wants to what was like saying there might be a live action like uh, dark dark yeah which is really cool and, because yeah. Daredevil was the inspiration for the turtles yeah. uh, originally when they all had red uh, bandanas mm-hmm. oh they all had red yeah the very first comic they all had red it was a much darker comic mm-hmm. and then it wasn't until Hasbro took over I think it was Hasbro yeah, uh, yeah. took over the rights that they turned cartoony and they wanted them different colors remember how all the toys had different shades of green yeah to match or to coincide with their their stuff because like well we don't know which one that each Kinda one is contrast like, a little bit more that's right yeah. so they they definitely kidified the whole thing mm-hmm. once they got the toy rights yeah what I'm getting is Peter Laird might keep, Laird and Eastman are the ones that did it yeah uh, so I'm thinking that they're wanting to harken back now that they've seen the Daredevil show and how amazing that is it's like yeah. well that's what the fucking turtles should be. That was the one thing I honed in on is when I was reading that article about where the, what the direction. Because again, we all we heard the initial thing, the initial link I sent you guys, I think was it's an idea. And I think it's still now the same thing. it might still be the same thing, but now they've kind of given it some direction to say we're kind of leaning towards dark and Daredevil. As soon as they saw that, I was like, that that could be awesome. That's I where think. they bring in Stephen Denight to set up that first season, just like yeah. they did for Daredevil. Yeah. And if let him set it, yeah. let him set it up. And then let them set the tone for it and, and let it happen. And then uh, yeah. Daredevil, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle crossover. Yes. So I say no. Batman. It's Batman. No, I know it's going to be Batman, but I, I have think a call Daredevil would be really but cool. But Netflix is releasing this, correct? I believe so. I believe so. I don't know how far they're going to go. Hopefully they don't that. cancel it when it's at its peak. Awkward. Can you imagine? It's so terrible. Apparently they're going to bring him back, but I hope they don't recast No, him. I hope they don't bring it back. So rather, there's a, I can't <laughs> and on talk a about note. it. Far From Home sets oh. up a perfect opportunity to bring a certain character into the MCU. Well, I did see a thumbnail where it had Spider-Man and Daredevil. That's why I asked you the one time, is there a Daredevil cameo in Spider-Man Far From Home? I haven't seen it yet, no. but I'm like, Get on. oh, I kind of got it. Do you know what I'm sp- talking about, though? Like how they bring it up? I can't remember. With legal issues? Maybe, yeah. I, I don't end. think I caught that at the very end, I think that's a perfect way to bring it up. Hmm. That wouldn't be terrible. Interesting. That wouldn't be El Terrible. For Nef- I want to say I want to talk about Netflix though, like just quickly, is they're really bad at marketing. Like they it just was. released a trailer for like 13 Reasons Why, like yesterday. And oh, like, it comes canceling. out at the end of August. I'm like, what the fuck? Like Wait, aren't they canceling it too? No. Like apparently they have four like the fourth season's gonna be the last one. Oh. Yeah. But no. yeah, remember I talked about how there was a school shooting? I don't think they're, and they kind of left on a cliffhanger. They're allowed to cancel it. <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, no, I, that is like a big like. Honestly, it's a guilty yeah. pleasure because it's such a fucking like soap drama. It, it's like soap it's so messed up. I again, like I, I, I was hooked on that first season. How like, close crazy. is it to Riverdale? Oh, I see, like kind of like same kind of look. More like not, not, not in terms of content. I'm just saying more gritty, but like way, same, yeah. like same yeah. kind of yeah. thing. It's okay. high school it's, kids at the end of the day. It's right? probably so. not going to be for me then. But yeah, no, like they set up like uh, it might be. They set up this huge cliffhanger where like this guy gets caught with a gun at the end of season two. Yeah, and then the third trailer, they didn't even acknowledge it. It's like, what the fuck are you like? Why would you set it up that way? Yeah, silly. I hate when they do I, that. I think you might like it more than you think. It's I, it's do you. It's, a, it's, an addi- it's an addicting show to watch. Like, yeah, it's almost where you watch well, and you're just like, because you just want to find out more and more and more because it's a mystery setup, mm-hmm. and this kid's finding, you know, he's he's and this seems he's like, behind yeah. on re on you. You basically know the gist of it. You've heard, yeah. so he gets these tapes last, and he's hearing about it, as, and he everyone mm-hmm. else knows already what's happening, and he's just figuring it out. So you're following his story, mm-hmm. figuring it all out. So I honestly think you would enjoy it. I can't say it's on the Riverdale esque, other than the. Why well, didn't like react a, a few either. relationships because again it's high school drama stuff but it's on the more mature side I guess it's also say. shorter like it's not as like Riverdale's like yeah. super fucking long now I was like mm. I saw the first season I'm like maybe I'll watch it I'm like nope yeah. not even gonna bother I think I'm in, I'm more invested in the characters than but now I'm I'm That's invested in the story why you stick around yeah um well I guess my I missed a segue this has nothing to do with what we just said That's right okay. now but um the Continental TV show to be a John Wick prequel I always thought it would be. I think that's a great idea. Oh, I think you need to either it's just establishing or it's like when it breaks kind of like breaks ground in the sense of it becomes what it becomes. You mean when they buy that build, that Tribeca building in the middle? Sure, yeah. And they change it from the Daily Bugle into well, the Continental. And that's the thing. It's like what do we we don't know much. Like what was the very first Continental? Where did this all start? Does it go that far back? Right. So we might be able to get a little glimpse of like, I don't know if Ian McShane's being brought back. But again, it's all just an idea right now and he might be de-aged I think it might probably know I, I think it depends on his American Gods contract and how much he can do who it's Keanu Reeves no, no Ian McShane. McShane mind you if he's the dire- he doesn't actually necessarily have to be there I would however like I would like I don't want it to circle around on a, a single assassin I would actually no. like it to circle around the maitre d like the head S guy I don't think it should ass- it wouldn't be on an assassin at all it's on the content list. so it'd be the manager and the maitre d but I think it would be I think it should be more the maitre d mm-hmm. and like his side of the story and his side and then what they can do is like not his side of the story but as he is pretty much the one running things yeah. while like the director is also there too but there seems to be like He's got it on lock, right? He's yeah. not just the guy in the front. Mm-hmm. He knows what's going on. He's security. He controls everything or whatever. Or not controls everything, but is is aware of a lot going on there. Yeah. I think establishing Continental, the first one, and then branching off into the other ones is a, a good thing to do, I mm-hmm. think. And I also think that not focusing on a single assassin, but having little mini anthologies of other assassins going off to do jobs would be kind of cool to see and how their ecosystem works kind of like what they showed in John and, Wick 2. I haven't seen yeah, John Wick 3 yet. Fine. So I'm mm-hmm. my I guess see it like soon. But, but also to kind of on that where you're saying how like they they go through the ecosystem. So basically their interactions with the Continental, yes. the manager, yes. the maitre d, yeah. perhaps another branch of the Continental as we saw in the second one. I so. want to see the busboy cleaning the tables too. Show show that busboy's life and like trying to hide from his parents that yeah. like a young Henry Hill yeah. that's like trying to say he's got his after school job but he's actually working for the mob Yeah, and this little bus boy is cleaning tables at the Continental give yeah. him a fun filler like a couple episodes yeah, yeah. and then it, it'll just branch off into a Boogie Nights other spinoff that would be cool yeah. too just just and like Dick I, I definitely either a John Wick cameo or uh, definitely name drop would definitely be I feel, I feel like they're gonna name drop like a lot for yeah. sure that's, see that's what I'm worried about I don't want too much I think it's gotta be done tastefully is it a the other thing is, I never, I never read the full article. Is it a prequel after John Wick retires and before he comes back? How many years did he have? Two years. I think so. Okay, it's a short period of time. So it's either a prequel before John Wick shows up. Mm-hmm. So they don't do that whole like like the Angels of Shield thing. It's like, oh, I got to talk to Sony Stark. Oh, Thor. Oh, Captain America. This like that's why I stopped watching it after episode one because I'm like, oh, you guys are just name dropping. That was episode whole, one. The whole cast of Avengers is name dropped in the first episode of Agents <laughs> of S.H.I.E.L.D. And I'm like, that's terrible. Should we bring the Hawk into this? No, no, no. Not yet. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> do you get that we're part of the same universe yet? Or should we go bring uh, Nick Fury in here? Do you get it? Do you get it? Do you get it? Oh, 
Looks like Nick left his eye patch again. Damn it, Nick Fury. See, that's what I'd like, just like in the Continental, just out of nowhere. Hey, can I borrow a pencil? Yeah, just don't pull a John. Ha ha ha. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Jeez. Oh, would you like a wick number two? Like, <laughs> oh, wah, wah. Yep. That's funny. But that's where I'm Actually, curious. that's kind of funny we're talking about it because I was just watching a Family Guy episode where they... Uh, where Brian gets those fake teeth and becomes a real estate agent, mm. and uh, they have that squirrel, <laughs> and he's like, "Oh, what is he? he's like you to build a dam or something." He's like, "Does it?" We use him just around just the uh, the right amount, and then yeah, they I do know. another cut back, and he's like, "We use him too much." <laughs> exact same thing. Yeah, it's so funny just watching those shows. Just like when you have nothing to do, like American oh, Dad, yeah. I was just watching some that's, episodes. I'm like, that's oh my, my go-to. I can't do American Dad, but Family Guy oh, definitely is one me for and me. Nick love American Dad so much. So and I just finished watching Skin Wars, which has nothing to do with. <laughs> Yeah. And we're also watching Final Table. Delaware. Really good. I just tried. <laughs> Delaware. I'm in Delaware. <laughs> I tried. So I'm like. It's a lot. I Delaware. was like. Gonna, I was almost done with Community, like season four. But oh, honestly, like. Dude. The past two seasons fucking suck. Like, Wait, it's terrible. Is, is season good. four. No, season There's four season still six. with the original. Yeah. It's just it's not as good. Five, five and six are beyond garbage. I started Entourage again. I finished season one yesterday. Yeah. Entourage. Classic. Yeah. No, no, I'm on season two. That's the first first two seasons specifically are really good seasons of TV. Yeah. Even though I really hated the Mandy Moore stuff, but I also don't like when, I don't know, I think it was just because I just don't like how unreasonable some people get. Like how unreasonable Vince was with when he started dating Mandy Moore. Yeah. Like a heel turn right away. Just That's the Hollywood. Like, uh, it's the Hollywood lifestyle. I think the and worst oh, relationship. So nuts. The worst season. Well, well I, I'm rewatching it again, so maybe I'll change. But was the Sasha Gray? Yeah, that was that, that was, was like six, six or seven. No, seven was the final, wasn't it? Or eight? No, there's eight. eight so then eight. I think it was. Uh, it might have been six. Honestly, five. I got annoyed by Eric's girlfriend, that uh, mm. Ashley. Oh, the one that was uh, a little squirrel girl that was just a clinger. Robert Pip, uh, the Robert Pupkin. Uh, yeah, 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 from, yeah, yeah. I think it was. I think it was uh, De Niro's character in Mean Streets. Yeah. yeah, No, that was. I that was annoying. That. Just because of her alone, she yeah. was beyond annoying. Like, and it wasn't even. It was already bad enough that in the first season or first or one season one and two where they had Eric bonding over his like his girlfriend yeah. at the time, and it was kind of like, come on, Eric, wake up or whatever. Yeah. But then he gets into it with this girl who's just nothing, n- no good qualities about her. Not even as an actress. Yeah. She wasn't good at all. It was the same in. Um, she was in Game of Thrones. Is, is oh, that not yeah. the? Is that the same girl? Oh, maybe. Or am I thinking Ra- like you mean Ramsey Bolton's girlfriend? Yeah. Oh shit! Now that you said Do that, I look that know. up. Confirm. Okay. Oh yeah, because your phone said. Um, you know, it's over there. The other one is making noise. The other one is I didn't care for the episode with. Oh, sorry. I liked. I liked the fact that they had what's his face as the weed Sherpa. Uh, Val Kilmer. Val Kilmer. Yeah, I thought yeah. that was hilarious. Was that in, like the first couple seasons? Like, yeah. The one, okay. uh, I just didn't care yeah. for his girlfriend in that so, like, episode, this is the chick too. the talking about, correct? Oh, yeah. It's not the same That's girl. That's not her. No. Yeah. Looks similar, though. I, when you said that, I thought it was her automatically. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Pretty close. Yeah. I think the show the show really did a good job with Ari, for sure. Obviously, he's the he he's the everything focus, about yeah. it. But I think because he was such a big focus, that's the only reason why the show was that good. Yeah. For the for a good chunk of it. Drama threw in some good stuff because he was just so crazy. I think like, Chubby, crazy. Chubby Turtle and Drama were really good. Mm-hmm. But I think when Turtle... Chubby Turtle. Oh, Chubby just, Turtle. Yeah. yeah. No. But when he lost <laughs> all of that weight, it was just a little... Like, I don't know. It just... Yeah. There's a different feel to it. and But it's the same thing with all those other shows. I think what's... Someone had mentioned something where you always get mad at your bands mm-hmm. when they evolve and they do something different. Which, by the way, there's a new Tool album out there um, for all you Tool fans. Oh, man. They're awesome. Um when the band changes and does something different and everyone's still wanting them to harness exact, like sound exactly like, like Call they of did Duty 10 fans. years ago, like all fans, everybody <laughs> want wants it to be the same thing. Just new. Come on. We just talked about the same thing with Lion King. Like well, yeah. we wanted exactly that. Do not touch anything of what you did in the original. Obviously they do. And then we get upset about it. I think it's a different thing there than some other yeah. like uh, musicians that evolve Ad- and learn. Additions are Okay. But subtractions yeah. of key things. Yeah, I, I think. But I get what you're saying in, in yeah. the sense of the artists and music and stuff like that. That's that's completely different. That has to evolve in some way. Yep. Yes, they can stay within their same genre. Don't do like the Taylor Swift thing where she jumps back and forth from country and pop and. Or bullshit. she's like actually like successful. Like we're kind of just works she's for successful. Her. True, those true. Except her country fans hate her for going pop, and their yeah. pop fans just don't like her because they're like, "You're not real pop. You just transferred over." And then she yeah. goes and does a country thing, and then the pop fans are going to be like, "Wait a minute." Yeah. You're a pop girl. With music, it's a totally different element. But when it comes to, again, like with these movie remakes, 
again, there's gold right there. Don't mess with it, especially if you're going down the road. You're not doing something original. Don't change what's good. Mm-hmm. So in we're uh, we're still excited for the Continental prequel TV show. Absolutely, yeah. Okay, just you bet. More. I was trying to realize. I tried to think how we got here. Going back up the dream. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Went deeper and deeper. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like, I don't know if I ever want to change that anymore. Before I was really upset at my tangents and art. Now you guys are getting into the tangents too, which I think is. I don't recall like, it just how, happens. I, I know I transitioned. <laughs> I don't even recall how I transitioned or like what I even talked about. Uh, like, I think get, you talked that you were watching Entourage. Oh but, yeah, I was. But how did that? <laughs> well, how, I, I think it was because of my Family Guy thing. No, there you go. Yes, <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Okay, that was the second level that of went the from dream. Shield of <laughs> Shield, and because you were saying, are they just going to reference John Wick and no, all of them? No. Then it went to Shield. Then it went to Family Guy. We figured it out. Wow. Back up through the dream. There we go. Wow. Wow. Inception. Oh, is here. Oh. Sorry. Very good. <laughs> okay, very good. Very good. Have you seen Inception? No. Oh. <sighs> You should see. It. There, yeah, there's so many great movies. You know, man. Apparently, it gets too fucking like intimidating. Good job, big facts. <laughs> Good job, big facts. I'm in big facts. We'll call you big months. lazy from now on. Like big fail. <laughs> that wasn't very good. Sorry. That's all right. It's okay. We'll just write. We're just gonna have to write you a list of movies to sit and watch. Now that you're not doing actually, anything. There's, there's literally uh, there's those posters like scratch. Oh, so I want we'll get one. you one of those, and then you watch all those hundred movies, and then you come back on the show. And then we can talk about all of them. It's been five years. But until then, you're off. <laughs> you're off the show for five years until you watch. You were voted off the island. Yeah. No, because then we'd have to see which ones that we haven't seen. I'm pretty sure I've seen a good chunk of them. Right, but not a lot. Have you seen Gone with the Wind? Yeah. Have you seen Casablanca? No. Have I'm you seen not Vertigo? Watching random ass like in news. Have you seen Rear? Have you seen Rear Window? No. Yeah, so those are all those are those are. Some well, I have a short. I have a shorter. I have a shorter are, list than him. Three, three of those are just Hitchcock films. Yeah, there you go. So, um, I've seen Vertigo and Rear Window, but I haven't seen. I've only seen Casablanca, but I have not seen Gone with the Wind. Believe it or not, Ooh. and that's like still. Some people say that's a top movie of all time. Well, yeah, they argue that that's still number one top grossing because of inflation and blah blah blah. So, oh, whatever, man. Inflation's silly. Yeah. Inflation's for balloons. Oh. You know, I didn't realize people were actually, people are both, there are people out there that are both afraid of balloons and physically attracted to balloons. Of course. It's 2019. Yeah. Makes sense. Anything goes. Yeah. Anything goes. (laughs) There's a funny Um, story. So like on the weekend, uh, like you, you, I don't know if you'd understand this because this is more like my generation thing with Snapchat where if people are like quote unquote depressed, Mm -hmm. they'll go on Snapchat saying, well, black screen saying, don't talk to me. No one snap. Only real ones know what's up and shit like that. That sounds like Facebook where (laughs) they they throw like an ominous thing, like Mm -hmm. not feeling good. And then they don't want to talk about it. Every time I try to talk to somebody, they're never there. Exactly. And they just leave it in big, bold letters like... Do you want somebody to talk to you, I guess? No, well, I can't talk about it right now. <laughs> an, yeah. So that's what I did. I posted oh, that on my story saying, no one snap, only real one knows what's up, hashtag RIP, right? And just like, to, just because like, everybody knows I roast people like this all the time. Like, Jesse, mm-hmm. like, text me like, yeah, like, you know, I know you like make fun of people. So I didn't buy it for a second. I'm like, what the fuck is this guy doing? So yeah. anytime somebody asked me what was wrong, I'd say the exact same words each time. Legally, I cannot respond. <laughs> and I kept the fifth. We it don't got, have the fifth. Though. It got too like it got too big. Where someone was like, "I heard you got a wrestle." Like, okay, no, no. So I, like, it was up for two oh, hours. That's pretty good, actually. Mm-hmm. That's awesome. But this one girl, she's like, "Well, like, what happened?" I'm like, "Legally, I can't respond." I kept saying it for like five minutes. She's like, "Okay, well, legally, you can't talk about it, but you can post on your Snapchat story." <laughs> like, oh, she got you. That's a fair point. <laughs> she's a keeper. But you didn't you should, post. You should go on hey, a date with her. Uh, no, you didn't post the content. You just posted that there was something. Mm-hmm, exactly that. But yeah, no, people like people bought it hard. They thought like I was going through something. Like, no, man, like what the fuck? Like I just oh man, the I think room. people are being not very creative either. I think I would just for for a week straight if I really wanted to do this, I would just be like a big black background with white lettering that says I can't even with an emoji. No, no just emoji. Really just it. but then they think you're I basic can't and just an Starbucks. Even. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, <laughs> then it begs the question: you can't even what? But I would just be, ever, I, and then the I answer can't even to that, open this job. The, the the answer is I just can't even. No, nothing. You guys, it kind of reminds me of terrible crowd. Like, trip on though. Terrible like, crowd. He's kind of the same way. Where this guy was like thirty five years old, and he's like a nice. He's a really nice guy. Was it the guy I roasted the one time, and no. you got really upset about it? Oh, well, I don't think he actually heard about it. No, that was mm-hmm. he did not actually hear about. It. No, so this guy, like, he's a customer, and it's weird because Blake. 
was like always kind of like on his Blake. dick like always like he would do the same things like something's wrong he'd be like oh what's wrong man he'd always ask this well, that's a good well, person yeah, to the, have you gotta ask questions but like yeah but then he had a birthday party coming up at the end of the month okay and i am 18 this guy's 35 and invited me to his birthday party yeah, just me have- and tino tino's in oh. greece my boss oh, yeah so, so he's not going you. my mom's like well why don't you go anthony i'm like what the fuck why are you encouraging me to do this like no like he's a nice guy just full of 35 year olds like i'm not gonna that's just weird yeah it's almost as weird as being in the basement with a 30 year old and a 29 year old and my mom is the one who said i should go like she's like don't be that's rude i'm different. like what the fuck is wrong with you you were the one like bitching about using video for the podcast two years ago now you want me to go to this guy's house she was bit she just didn't want like you know so people are creepy on the internet oh yeah they are creepy on the internet. Well, creepy everywhere yeah but like people are creepy everywhere that character development to like just doesn't give a shit now. Just go. Yeah, go. Oh, I just had something that I wanted to say and I completely forgot about it. It had something to do with the I can't even. No. Shit. But it wasn't like that. It was something else. I can't even poop. No. In three days. No. <laughs> That's God a problem. I'm gonna, you know I'm going to remember it at like 2 o'clock in the morning. And All I'm going to wake up and phone be recording? like. What's up, guys? <laughs> just added this in the episode. So what the fuck's going on? Shh. Well, it's not going to be organic anymore. That's the worst part. Just sprinkle it in there. Like some feta. Yeah. I roasted Nick for being like the number one happy birthday guy on Facebook. (laughs) (laughs) I remember that. I was like, oh, man. So there was these two people that he knows them. And I think he knows them because like they went to school or something together. Like so like the whole group of people. But anyways, he was like, oh, and happy birthday, by the way. So he knew off the top (laughs) of his head that it's her birthday. And then I'm like, dude, you got like your happy birthday. Everybody like every time I open up Facebook, which is now it's like once every three days mm-hmm. and it shows like because sorry i'll open it up whenever it says the it's these people bir- these people's birthdays yeah and then i'll click on it to see whose birthdays are because it's like oh this person and four other people have a birthday mm-hmm. today so i'll look it up and then i'll send them an actual text message or a facebook message mm-hmm. if i know them and if i'm so inclined so then when it kicks me out on the front page on, on their birthday page or whatever nick's on there all the time mm-hmm. and i'm like dude you're like Eight exclamation marks between two sentences, like you're, you're you're just going like you're going off the rails. I don't know if you like that, but uh, he's a birthday slut. He's a, <laughs> he is a birthday slut. <laughs> wow, he's really he's really going for it. I removed my birthday from Facebook. Yeah, honestly, I have, mean as a sound, it kind of feels like a chore, like responding to each single birthday message because kind of like I was bad at it. I honestly never responded to everyone. I would this year. I made it a I point like, to I like, like everything. But I was really bad for years of not responding to but, each one or even doing like a group thank you. See, kind of that's thing. what I want to do now. Yeah, I, I do like, the group and then I'll do a group thing yeah. at the end. Like, I always forget. I've always done it. You never respond to everybody. That's that's silly. I just copy and paste. Literally, I just copy thank you and just boop boop boop. Yeah. No, you go. Um, you like every single person, and then you put a, uh, you put a traditional. Oh, every year it's just so overwhelming. Or oh, I can't believe how many people. And oh, I woke up this morning and I thought it was going to be a good day, but the outpour of all the people that thank me on my like it's always the same message by every single person. And then you get that one person that fucking writes an entire goddamn story about how their life has been changed over the past twenty four hours, and that everybody <laughs> that's been posting and sending text messages and letters and someone sent a an owl from hogwarts <laughs> and a fucking eagle a and a raven <laughs> three people light lit lanterns on top of the roofs of their houses three to bring in the rohirrim nice like, the, <laughs> the whole fucking deal and how that's like changed their whole entire lives and i'm like holy fuck dude like just 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 say <laughs> thanks i'm <Bring it> <laughs> just the only say one who's thanks. Like, birthday is kind of like a weird day because it's always like just a sadder day where you're just kind of like a sadder day or a Saturday? Like a sad day. Oh. <laughs> like, uh, more sad. Anybody, I'm like, anybody's birthday always on a Saturday? Wait, what? <laughs> but Are least, you melancholy on that day? Is that what you're well, I don't know. Yeah, it's like one of those like it's like shit just happens on my birthday year after year where it's like it's just like weird and just like fucks up my mood. I'm just like this, like whatever. Like for four years in a row, when I was in elementary school, my birthday was on the first day of school. <laughs> yeah, that sucks. Actually, with Michael, Michael is like near the end of August, so it's kind of like. Yeah, so yeah. he would have had the same thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I was in spring, so it didn't matter. Yeah, I don't mind. It's April, so. <laughs> yeah, I think you're fine. Yeah. I think the only thing that could be relatively depressing about your birth year is that uh, once again for another year, Jesus will get re- die on a cross and get resurrected. So See, depending on how you look at it. That's the thing. With our Greek Easter, it was always like the busiest week where it's just like Easter and then my birth. I remember one week it like went coincided. It was kind of like. I was like seven or something. I just got forgotten about. It's like, yeah, we'll do it like later. And then I shared it with my sister like a month after. I'm like, it's nice. 
<laughs> I'm really upset I couldn't fucking remember what I wanted to say, and I think it would have been really good, too. I can't even remember. I can't oh, even. There you go. Remember. Remember. Remember who you are. Okay. What else you got? What else you got? Well, I have a, like I just thought about this because we've all worked at restaurants, correct? Correct. Yes, we have. So at Trifon's, like our like kind of get together or like our like ending event, we just mm-hmm. talked about like the stupidest customers we had and the stupidest questions they had. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, that'd be a funny topic because we've all had or you've had like much more than I. I've had like yeah. I've had like, like eight actually technically, in, but it's like still like different because you guys actually worked at actual restaurants. I worked at a fast food one. Technically. I worked at A and W in the mall. Oh, okay. Someone so, literally yeah. came up and asked us when the power was out, if the power was out, and it was pitch dark in there. <laughs> I sat there and I looked at him, and, and like I could, I I couldn't even at that point. <laughs> We're just like, what? And then my buddy Sean was working, and he's just like, excuse me. And he like he ended up getting him promoted to a manager, so he like had to watch what he was like what he had to say. Mm. Oh man, and and like it's just crazy. I'm like, what did you think? We had two gnomes inside the oven running, like pedaling on a bike, charging the fucking thing. No, the power, the whole place is pitch dark. Someone yeah. asked me what was on the pepperoni pizza. Oh, wow. I'm like, it's in the fucking name, man. Like, what do you want me to say to this? <laughs> I don't even know what you want from me, man. I'm in high school. I don't eat this shit. Is the cheese vegetarian? Yep, there's only cheese on there. No meat? Yeah, no, just cheese. Are you sure? Yeah, man. Like, what the fuck? <laughs> no, we got fucking, like, salmon in there. Just the fucking shit with you. Just for fun. Yeah. Yeah, some wow. people are just... What size drinks do you have? Always piss me off the most, though. I think what happens is... Bef- the same as every Which other is- damn restaurant Sorry, in the entire it? world. What size drinks do you have? Oh, yeah. And then they say, can I get a large? Sure, I get them a large. That's too big. Give me the smaller one. I'm like, just fucking ask for it. There's three. Just pick. You didn't have Trifon size? No, that's like the large. The cake size? Well, technically, we have a Trifon's cup, but like... I don't oh, know. well. <laughs> that's like a to-go cup. <laughs> is no, that common knowledge? Because I don't think it is. Well, it's just there. I'm pretty sure... Every restaurant almost has small, the medium, and large people. Same. Yeah, Whoever's no. listening, it's small, medium, and large. Don't like, ever ask that question. I again. applied to Starbucks and I I worked there and someone like asked me for a large. I'm not gonna be like, do you mean a venti? Like, no, okay, I know what you're talking about. I'm not being a dick to you. Like, yeah. <laughs> Unless yeah. I hate you, I used to do that. I said like, large for a long time. Are they get and it. They, they no. They actually corrected you. They actually. Oh, you mean a grande? I'm like, sure, man. <laughs> like, I, that's actually a min. min so I say medium, medium. Medium. Yeah. Sorry, I kept mediums a grande. I kept ordering I a medium. Venti. And they kept like being like, "Oh, you mean a grande?" I'm like, "Well, by definition, it kind of doesn't really work because medium yeah. grande is grand, grand, mm. like it's big." There's that like, funny uh, little Ant-Man. clip from Role Models. Yeah, no, I mean, it was like, uh, I know it's Paul Rudd. Yeah, yeah. Role, Role Models. He did that whole thing mm-hmm. where he's like, he's trying to order a coffee, and he's, <laughs> he just goes into this mm-hmm. girl. It's a funny clip from Role Models. You should watch it. You haven't seen it? No. With Sean William Scott and I know the Paul movie. Rudd. I just haven't seen it. There's a funny clip in there. You'll I haven't seen see the whole thing. I remember oh, okay. there's an ambient scene. Yeah. Where they take Ambien and... But yeah, yeah I like, just yeah, used yeah. to yeah. be a dick to people on purpose. They like piss me off where I'd be like purposely difficult where they'd ask me for something and I'd be like, oh, you mean this? And like, yeah. And I knew what they're talking about the whole time, but just to like... Just to like... Just gotta mess with people yeah, a little exactly. bit. Couldn't Spice up the day, you know? Mm-hmm. Uh, last thing I have is that Namor is reportedly the new Black Panther villain. Um, That'll be good. And is he'll he a be played villain? by he a, a guy named Henry Golding. Probably starts out as a villain. Right? Maybe. Henry Golding? Who's that? Golding? I don't know. To play him? Yeah. Um, uh, who's that? Look it up, please. And then uh, the, the whoever reported this also was the ones that reported that Mandarin is showing up in Shang Chi movie. I heard that movie. during the release. So the like, real Mandarin. Yeah. The yeah. Not ben um, Kingsley. Which we call it. This is Henry Golding. Yeah, I could see that. Um, he, he, yeah, he looks like a Namor. That looks awesome. Cool. Um, I feel like Namor kind of like not like he's like a thin well, guy, but like let's more look thin it up on our like on our like smartphones. Narrow. I think he's just got yeah maybe just a, let's let's look at our let's look at our phones here for what yeah now? see look at that picture Wait, that kind of looks like him yeah a little bit yeah I could see it yeah look good yeah none of these are clicking but it should be interesting I saw the the poster it looks pretty good how they have uh, Black Panther at the bottom or is it two kings yeah they use the K and the two kings to show the trident so yeah I think it'll be good it'll be interesting um, how close my thing will be how close they get to the Aquaman look. Hmm. I don't That'll think they'll be go because he's. I don't. Th- I think they might even. Well, I don't know if they're gonna go with this look. Yeah, no, literally that's just that's has. Brave. Literally just has the like, like. He looks like a Chippendales dancer minus the bow tie. Yeah, I think they'll probably adjust. <laughs> yeah, um, his it's abilities. Not Notable allies is Namor the First, the Avenging Son, Imperious Rex, and the Submariner. Don't know any of. So them. he probably starts out villain, I imagine, and yeah. then he'll turn. 
Avenger. Namor's more. abilities are aquatic adaptation, superhuman strength, speed, agility, senses, and reflexes, mild invulnerability, hmm. flight via tiny wings on his ankles. Very what? Greek mythological. It's like a Hermes. Hermes, yeah. That'd Telepathic control over sea creatures, longevity. Is that a sex joke? Hydrokinesis, mm-hmm. <laughs> ability to copy the powers of oceanic life forms, bodily water generation. Sounds like any other human. He can human. pee for five hours. For five hours straight, that's due to his longevity mm-hmm. and hydrokinesis. Mm-hmm. He can pee in a stall eight buildings away. It's like the Austin Powers scene where he just like sits there just and keeps, keeps peeing. Yeah, just to him for five hours. <laughs> and marine life empathy. That's supposedly a power. Sounds like a weakness, but... So uh, a lot of like people in 2019 have that power then, I guess. I don't understand what he, like you have empathy he's, towards he's, your sea animals. Of course you do. If you live with them, it's like anybody that has empathy towards any at, like dog that lives yeah. with a dog. I don't know anything about the Black Panther universe kind of thing, like his realm to see who is his main competitors. But it would be interesting. I think that they chose were, that route number one and how they go about it. I don't think there was anybody else that they can introduce him to. Um, yeah. And I think the other reason is because Okoye was the one that was mentioning earthquakes happening under the water. So kind of in Endgame, so it's yeah. like, oh, that's how it's. Hey, remember those uh, uh, blah, 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 the earthquakes that she mentioned? It's because of Namor, and everyone sitting in the theater be like, it's Namor. It's awkward because she was right. Yeah, exactly. You know, she's dead. I don't think she's ever been wrong. Black Panther or she wasn't Black wrong. Widow? I mean, no, Okoye. Oh, what the hell? Why? Why would you get on Black, Black Widow? <laughs> well, because Black Widow was in that. She's scene. the she's oh, the okay, she's sorry. the one who asked about it. Remember, Rachel oh, Vice is also a Black Widow of sorts. Supposedly, there's a lot of Black Widow. Black Widows in the Eternals. Yeah, like it's going to be like a, a a nest of widows, Black Widows. That is a nest I don't want to hang out with, or do I? Maybe. Wow, SJWs are coming after your ass right now. Yeah, of course they are. You know what I was really pissed off on uh, about? I heard that Scarlett Johansson retracted some of her statements. Awkward. So I felt that was a little bit of a cop out. Yeah, like Take you, the whole you, you did. Of the you were you were week. right on what you said. You were totally right on everything you said. Just stick to what you're saying. That's courage. That's not like... So the fact that she retreated was a little bit uh, upsetting for me. Um, fuck, I'm really upset. I couldn't remember what I was going to say. I'm, I can't even. Okay, what else you guys got? I don't know. Do you, Nothing. Can you just stop put your... Don't put your whole mouth on the microphone. You said get close. <laughs> oh. No, you you guys are that so close? <laughs> That's too close. Can you I, hear me now? No, I've been able to hear you the most this episode at, since ever. You've been... You're fine. Cool, cool, cool. I bought these microphones because that's for I got you that guys. Deep baritone slash bass, depending on a good day. Turn up the beef. What else you guys got? I have no idea. I have nothing. Nothing. Sadly. Nothing. Well, do you, you have, have anything? anything? Do you have any no. of the restaurant? Like, do you have any restaurant stories? Oh, yeah. I guess we restaurant. Can you-, you know what? I never got fully in depth like the waiter side. Mm-hmm. I was on the bus bus boy side. Uh, I'm getting it more now with the work I'm doing construction. Mm-hmm. I deal more with the public, and we always get those questions. And it's like you have to explain to these people what's going on and why it needs to happen. And they get irate, as always. <laughs> they get irate. And it's just like, what do you want me to do, man? I'm like, you got to call the number. Sorry. Call the hotline. We got to track this shit. <laughs> it's like, I, I would love to help you, but I can't. So I, I don't there's also to, that. And then you get those around. Yeah. Like this, even today, we had a question from a resident about like, oh, they're going to close the streets. So where am I supposed to park? I'm like, not in your area so how am i supposed to get out i'm like they'll tell you to move your vehicle before they completely tear mm-hmm. everything out yeah i honestly I get more of it in construction than i would in the in the in the realm of like the service industry because i was busboy uh for four years and then i also worked in a kitchen okay. at a kelsey's missed that the place kelsey's where applebee's was in our area oh, oh yeah i remember kelsey's i love kelsey's it's a it's another like chain part of the care corp that has like applebee's montana Silvers, okay. I don't know whatever the hell else is on that, but yeah, it's a great place actually. I miss it. Yeah, you did like that place. I did. It was great. I did a lot of fine dining stuff. So once I got into the kitchen, I was in the kitchen. Yeah. Was about kind it. of disconnect yourself. So yeah, as a server though, nice. you hear a lot of stupid. Yeah, it was shit pretty great. Time. You know the thing I, I enjoyed the most is fine is like my favorite thing was when you had four people come in, so two couples, yeah. and then there was always the one guy who thought he was the big shot, but he ended up being the one that wasn't paying, so mm-hmm. the other guy that was the big shot, like you either had them be a dick and they were paying, or they were the ones that were just like, a dick weren't paying and they were the most useless person out of those four people. And you could just pick, like you could just notice it and you're just looking and you're like- Yeah, you could pick people pretty quick. Yeah, you get used to that. That was That's the one thing that I wish 
I was still in the restaurant business for because I got pretty decent at at least reading the people that I was serving yeah. enough that mm-hmm. I that like I used to make bank, bruh. Yeah. Um. But that's all I got. I had one more. It's just like, one of the comments, like, because the thing with me working as like at the till mm-hmm. was it had to deal with a lot of stupid people, and like as a very sarcastic person, like Tino, like. The things he said to customers and got away with were like outstanding because he said some pretty screwed up things. Because he owned it. Hmm? Because he owned it. Yeah, I know. But they wouldn't even even hear it. Like they would just. Like he said to to their face point blank in a way where they weren't paying attention. He knew they weren't. Yeah, yeah. And I was dying laughing. Hmm. But I remember there was this one customer that came up and our tip screen. What happens is we give them the option and I would just walk away. Yeah. And let them figure it out because like it's really touch screen, but people are too like incompetent to realize like. Mm-hmm. How to just click no? Yeah, she goes. Like, I come back. Yeah, I'm not uh, giving you a tip. I'm like, okay, that's cool. I just press a no tip option. She's like, yeah, you know, nothing personal. You know, I just don't tip for fast food because you're not actually serving me. And I stopped and I was like, wow, you might not tip very often then. But I stopped myself. I'm like, I can't say this. Oh <laughs> well, yeah, you know about your tongue a lot. Should have said it. Um, <laughs> totally random. But once upon a time in Hollywood, we'll get a recut into a Netflix miniseries. So once upon a time in Hollywood, four hour cut may be heading to oh. Netflix, and it's already a long movie. So I don't know if a four hour cut. How, how long is it now? Movie. It's almost three hours. So we get it's the. Fucking long, it's a long movie. Like like are we talking yourself. like ten minutes, five minutes shy of it? So you can basically call it three it's hours. Like ten minutes shy. Yeah, wow. it's three hours. Interesting. So we get the director's cut for that movie. Yeah, but yet nobody asked for it, but we asked for the Snyder cut. Get oh man, that's been coming time. up a lot lately. Once upon actually. a time is in Hollywood is a better movie. Um, I will say this: I did say this once when I was a busboy. Uh, they had a wrestling tournament here, mm-hmm. and they had a bunch of wrestlers. And the wrestlers came in late. Were these pro sucked. or just like kind of like whatever? I don't remember. I think they might have been pro. I don't remember. They were giant though. Like these guys were big guys. Uh, anyway, so they were coming in, and at the time when I was a busser there, they had the. It was a restaurant that had the water glasses with the stem on it, okay. and so I had a trick where I was able to stack. 35 glasses all along my arm and so you put them in between your fingers yeah. so you can stack two there and then you interlock them with the stem yeah. all the way up your arm and then you layer it over again so i'd be able to do a full table whatever one of the one of the guys that previously worked there taught me that trick and it was really helpful so the wrestlers were there they were eating they were being they were just enjoying themselves or whatever mm-hmm. a little bit obnoxious but not too bad so i walked by with it mm-hmm with a full stack of uh, uh, of those things. And then the one wrestler was like, show off. He's like, just goes like, huh, show off. I'm like, yeah, well, at least, at least this is real. That was my oh. first comment right away. Like, I didn't even wow. think. I said, yeah, well, at least this is real. Because I was so mad. I was there at like 1230. And these guys <laughs> were real. So I, Did he say I anything? I didn't hear anything. All I did was I bolted to the bar. <laughs> I dropped off the glasses. I'm like... Can I go? <laughs> <laughs> so I totally wussed it out, but just you know, the, I just the rocks it there, just yeah, yeah. diss the rock. What the fuck are you saying to me? That'd be that's awesome. If that, that, was, that, was, that was fucking funny. Oh my funny. god! Yeah, it was. That was. It was like the very first thing that came out of my mouth. And if there were that's like, out this weekend, by the way, Hobbs and Shaw. Yeah, I heard it's not doing well so far on the early release. It'll do good in China. Don't worry. I'm sure it will. That's true. Mm-hmm. I think that's it. I think I'm going for a laugh. That's probably what I'd go for. Apparently, going there's for a laugh. new uh, Christopher Nolan like teaser like attached to it. Mm. The casual movie goer said, yeah, exactly what I want to see. A thought-provoking movie trailer when I go to see Hobbs and Shaw. Yeah. <laughs> Did he end up seeing um, Once Upon a Time yet? I don't know. Okay. I don't think so. He's not said anything on his story. Mm. Um, well, I guess his review will come out soon anyways. All right. That's it. Anything else? That's all I got. That's, that's it. That's it. All. That is it. All right. Thank you once again for joining us at the F Word Podcast, an affiliate of the Saskatchewan Podcast Network. With sponsor by with this with sponsored by sponsored by Connexus Credit Union, the network, not the F Word. But you know, it kind of blends into one. Sure. Uh wherever you're listening from, I hope you're having a wonderful, wonderful day, week, hour, minute, whatever, all of that stuff. Uh if you're listening to us on Anchor Stitcher, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, Breaker, Castbox, Castbox, Overcast, Pocket Cast, Radio, bleh, Podbean, Radio Public, YouTube, or on the website at the Saskatchewan Podcast Network, which you could find us and a bunch of other podcasts as well. Uh, if you, you know, I'm dropping the ball here. Uh, if you are able all to drop all podcast a, avenues, all podcast avenues, Wait, if you're you able. Flex? If you're able to drop a like or a comment, if you like this episode, great. If you didn't, 
and you don't have to. But uh, at the very end, share sorry, your no, friends. Jokes on you. You watch share, it all. Share to your friends <laughs> if you like to as well, but you don't have to. All that good stuff. We just appreciate that uh, you lent us your ears. Uh, you can find me on Twitter at the F words G. Email us at, email us at the F word podcast at gmail.com. You can find our Instagram account, the F word podcast, where we put up posters for episodes coming up. As always, you can follow the Lazy Canadian as well on Instagram. I'm G. It's your boy. And Vass. We can't even, but we're out. Is that like going to be the title? We can't even. Oh, it's- <laughs>